let's go out to Palm Springs. Oh, yes, let's. A subtropical oasis in the California desert. It's within commuting distance of Hollywood, which makes it a mecca for movie stars who like to make a trip on winter weekends. <laughs> the atmosphere is elegant but informal, like a dude ranch on the Riviera. But Michelle Morgan and Paul Henry, also elegant and informal, prefer their holiday frontier style. That is, Paul does. But Michelle would much rather suffer the primitive comforts of the old prairie pullman. It's 7.30 in the morning, practically midnight, and they're all going out for a traditional breakfast ride. Their destination is a chuck wagon somewhere in the desert, and the last one there has to wash the dishes. This form of transportation may seem a little crude, but what with priorities and things, the old gray mare may well be the trolley car of tomorrow. One thing, though, you couldn't ask for a cuter conductor. Hurry up, Mr. Henry. We've reached the end of the line. There's nothing like a brisk ride before breakfast to whip up an appetite. And Hollywood folk, even as you and I, are pushovers for a platter of bacon and eggs. Come on over, Michelle. We're in the car barn, and the cafeteria is right around the corner. Let's see what's cooking. Next to the gravy train, the chuck wagon is the most popular thing on wheels. And it takes a cowboy's delicate hand to turn a slab of bacon into eaten meat. Michelle thinks the eggs need the feminine touch. How do you like them, Paul? Face down or looking right at you? Crash. <laughs> How about a little Western music, hmm? Thank you. Oh, there's nothing to compare with a meal in the desert. The sun in your eyes, sand in your hair, and ants in your food. Uh, but all that doesn't seem to bother Paul and Michelle. No, sir, they're hungry, partner. This is the life. A five-mile ride in the desert, crisp morning air, bacon and eggs, and a beautiful girl to cook them for you. What more could you ask? Well, for one thing, Paul could ask her not to cook the eggs in the same pan they fried the fish in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks as though they cooked the coffee in the pan they fried the fish in. Here's a fellow who believes in sharpening his appetite the hard way, with an axe. It's that old favorite, Neil Hamilton, and Neil refuses to leave his war activities behind in Hollywood when he's on a weekend vacation. Combining his defense duties with helpful exercise, Neil builds auxiliary trails and fire breaks in the mountains surrounding Palm Springs. Here in the desert, a strong wind and tinder dry brush could turn a careless spark into a raging wildfire. So volunteer fire wardens like Neil Hamilton constantly clear patches of undergrowth to form bare spots so that a fire won't spread. And water is so scarce in this area that all firefighting must be done by hand. What water there is is used not to quench the fire, but the firemen. Let's go back to town where we find Desi Arnaz and Senora Arnaz, better known as Lucille Ball. They're about to take off on a two-wheel tour to photograph the scenic beauties of the famous Palm Canyon. With Lucille as pilot and Desi as brakeman, their training on the conga line comes in handy on a bicycle built for two. <laughs> no backseat driving. <laughs> After six miles of hard riding, our two explorers find this picturesque palm grove. Hundreds of years ago, the Indians used to spend their weekends here, among the strange Washington filfera trees. They grow nowhere else in the country, and this region is popular with movie location directors for tropical background shots. And a good background is just what director Arnes is looking for. Lucille arranges everything on location. She's not temperamental, doesn't mind co-starring with the scenery. Ought to be a beautiful picture if Senor Arnes doesn't put his eye out for the camera. Ah, uh, here's a picture to knock anybody's eye out. Here's where the stars keep in practice for the open season on movie critics. Gail Patrick gets a lesson in skeet shooting from expert Carl Bradshaw. Two clay pigeons are released from different directions at different heights, and just to make it a little more difficult, Mr. Bradshaw won't load his gun until the first trap has been released. Hmm, pretty neat skeet, eh? Gail has never held a shotgun in her life before, but these clay canaries don't scare her. Of course, her teacher doesn't expect her to hit the bird the first time. Naturally not. She's new at it. 
<laughs> well, that's the first time an actress ever got the bird and liked it. When you're in the swim at Palm Springs, you're usually in the pool of the beautiful Hotel El Mirador. That's where most vacationing picture people float around, like our old friends Desi and Lucille. They're watching the pool instructors in some high board horseplay. This waterlogged loony comes up for more, more air. As he explains it to Lucille, his next dive is going to be a full Brody with a front one and a half and a back six and seven eighths. Now, there's nothing more beautiful in athletic art than the unbroken poetry of motion as a perfectly formed diver gracefully takes the spring of the board, then a flashing arc as he cuts the water like a knife without a ripple. It's sports like that that make people take up tennis. And when they're at Palm Springs, they take it up at the racket club, which is owned by Charlie Farrell. Here he is now giving lessons to Mrs. Farrell, who used to be Virginia Valley. She figures as long as her husband owns a tennis club, she might as well try to learn the game. Very simple, really. After getting a professional demonstration of the rudiments of service and returning, Mrs. Farrell takes her place on the other side of the net. But Charlie's mind isn't on his game. He sees his old friend Jean Lockhart whipping off a few chuckers of checkers with daughter June. <laughs> Teacher's gonna get an apple from his pupil. Uh-oh. Over on another court, the gallery is packed watching Peter Laurie in shorts battling Budge Patty and Bobby Falkenberg, national boys champions. Philip Reed and Jinx Falkenberg, Bobby's movie star sister, root from the sidelines. Charlie Farrell and Lily Demita keep an eye on the play, as does Elise Knox. There's champion Joe Hunt with Freeman Gotson, the Amos of Amos and Andy. They're amused by a mugging contest between Mr. Farrell and heavyweight Max Bear, which Charlie wins by a barrel ball. And as the sun sinks to rest behind the tennis courts, we say farewell to Palm Springs, playground of the sun and the stars. Mm -hmm.